What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Average Nerd Podcast. We're just a bunch of average guys talking about nerdy things. I'm your host, Juan. And joining me today, we have the handsome man from Hoth, Jorge. I don't want to grow up. Tatooine's finest, Jay. That's right. Our resident Jedi master, Dave. <laughs> and the last member of the Old Republic himself, Av. <laughs> <laughs> If you can't tell by that intro, today's theme will be Star Wars. Happy May the 4th, everyone. May the 4th be with all of you. And to start it all off, the way we like to start off our uh, podcast every week, we're doing our getting to know you question, or what we like to call the GTK of the day. Today's GTK of the day. Which was your first Star Wars movie or experience? And which was your favorite? Uh, I'll start things off. So the first time I ever saw Star Wars, I was actually a little kid. I didn't watch it from beginning to end. It was on TBS. Do you guys remember TBS? Is that TBS? Still- oh, yeah. Is TBS? I think still that's around? still a show. It's still around. Yeah, I think TBS is uh, still around. Or show. It's still around. I mean, network. <laughs> and it was uh, Empire. Uh, it was the scene on Dagobah where Yoda was teaching uh, Luke Skywalker uh, or training him on how to be a Jedi. And I remember flipping through the channels and then I was like, ooh, Muppets is on. <laughs> and then, oh, crap. <laughs> It's Star Wars, and it was definitely very cool. Um, as far as favorite movie, I think that's the same one. Uh, Empire Strikes Back is definitely my favorite. That's the first time we see Yoda, first time we see Lando. Uh, it's the first time we find out that Darth Vader's Luke's father just has all the iconic uh, parts. And happy 40th anniversary to Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back, that's right. Happy 40th. 40th. <laughs> all right, so moving on, let's go with Jorge. Well, let me start by which which uh, I watched first. I think it was A New Hope. I was really young, probably, um, I want to say this was early 90s. So I must have been five or six when I watched the first movie. And from then I was hooked. But going to my favorite, if you had asked me yesterday, which was my favorite, I probably would have said, and I'm sorry if this is blasphemous, but I would have said uh, episode three. I know that might not sit well with a lot of people, but <laughs> no, that's not, that, that's is, not that is personally no. my favorite just that's because those were the three, uh, episode one, two, and three were the ones I first watched in theaters. The original movies I hadn't watched in theaters, so mm-hmm. I just kind of grew up on those a little bit more. But as of today, my, my favorite entity from Star Wars is probably the last season of Clone Wars, specifically the last four episodes of Clone Wars. <laughs> The last four episodes felt like a movie. It, <laughs> man, that was amazing. It was fantastic. It was really well written. Yeah. Uh, the cinematography was great. The, the music. The yeah. music was spot on. Yes. Well, it made you feel for all of the scenes. Um, I, I don't really remember the first time I watched a Star Wars movie. I'm pretty sure it's pretty similar to Wands, where it was just on TV. Because, I mean, Star Wars is already out for like 20 some odd years. But um, my favorite one is also, again, like Wands. Is that Empire Strikes Back because mm-hmm. there's just so much going on in that whole movie. There's epic fights, Yoda training. I mean, it's your stereotypical training montage. Like, that's good. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a good movie. Oh, man. Okay. So, one of my earliest experiences with the Star Wars universe, I could say, is um, with my brother and sister. We used to have VHS tapes of the Star Wars <laughs> movies. Yeah, Return of the Jedi actually was one of um, my earlier memories because Jabba's Palace, I think, to me was probably like one of my favorite scenes in that movie just because you see all the like different aliens, uh, just the rescue of Han Solo and like all the action of Luke Skywalker swinging around his new lightsaber and everything. Leia in the gold bikini. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Slave Leia. <laughs> Did you guys know this? I mean, I think everyone might know this, but I just found this out today. I didn't realize that Disney had pulled a lot of their, or all of their Slave Leia products. Yep. Oh. Which I totally understand. I understand why they did that. I just did not know. Oh, yeah. I don't know it, wasn't, know that it wasn't too long after they acquired everything, like, legitimately, that all of that stuff started just randomly, rapidly disappearing. <laughs> Oh. Not cool. Not cool, Disney. Not cool. <laughs> For the See, but my favorite movie actually would have to be uh, The Last Jedi. Not Last Jedi. My bad. Um, the Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Rise of Skywalker, actually. I don't know. I was just thinking about like my whole experience this weekend. And 
which scenes and which moments like pulled at my heartstrings and I want to say that like that movie had a lot of those like full circle kind of moments of like Chewie finally getting his medal or like Luke finally lifting his X-wing like out of the water on his own also uh just kind of Ben's scene with Han and like how right, right. he he could have like uh went about that whole moment in the first uh in episode 7 the one thing i wish that was in Rise of Skywalker that i thought would have made it a perfect movie was rather than the voices of former jedi you get the force ghosts Ooh, that would have been <laughs> just hella ghosts. actually just seeing a that bunch of their like hell of ghosts though <laughs> 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 Actually, that would be kind of I want to cool. see like a, you know like a crowd yeah you know what i'm imagining i'm imagining a super saiyan 2 gohan with goku behind him as like a force oh. ghost when he did his kamehameha against yeah. cell against cell and you just yeah. have everyone behind ray that would have been epic yeah, and it wouldn't have been all the jedi i think all the, all, our, all the good ones just because you're a jedi doesn't automatically mean you can become a force ghost it's actually something right you can learn as you're dead i guess <laughs> All right, I guess I will go last. I guess a, a running joke now is that I'm the older statesman of the group. <laughs> so I, I will date myself a little bit. My first Star Wars movie for me um, was in back in 1983. I went to the movie theaters to watch Return of the Jedi uh, with my whole family. And it's it's just something that stuck because it's as uh, I think I was... What, I was born in 76 or four i was seven right seven as a you know young toddler seeing all that lightsaber battles and even the ewok fighting and all it, it got a lot of hate i'm sure back then too but even when they re-released it it got a lot of hate because you know ewoks fighting and and beating up biker scouts come on and um, speaking to <laughs> and, and speaking to Tagalog, yeah oh yun. We, we, <laughs> not ganda. we thought that was cool uh, but yeah, it just as a six, seven year old, seeing all that stuff, it just stuck to me. And uh, I became the Star Wars fan that I am now. And yeah, that was my first experience with the Star Wars universe. Um, and my favorite movie is, I think the most popular ones, I, a lot of people choose this one is Empire Strikes Back. And just like what Juan and, and Jay said, it, it just, I, I don't know, it's just, it's just a good movie. It has everything. And that whole, the cliffhanger, not the cliffhanger, but the the surprise at the end of that movie when Darth Vader reveals to Luke that he's his father and that just watching that for the first time, it's like, what the heck? <laughs> that it's just, and, and as a kid seeing that, you're like, wait, is he, he that's his dad? <laughs> for sure. I'm, I'm a little jealous that you actually got to experience Darth Vader telling Luke that he was his father. And that's like the first time you found that out because, yeah. you know, when I was a kid, that was already just like instilled in your brains that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father. So before I even saw the movie, I already knew that that was the dad. Be there and experience that. That, that must have been like pretty epic. Yeah. No, it was. It was. Took the words right out of my mouth, Juan. I was thinking the same thing. For sure. Oh, now that we've all t said what our favorite movies are, what are your favorite characters from just the Star Wars series and as a whole. Oh, by the way, shout out to Manny, a.k.a. Night Bodega, for sending in some questions. I think this was one of his questions, and we had thought of uh, doing this too. So right on, Manny. Yeah. Thank you. Um, let's Bodega. see. Her favorite character. I think that's pretty easy. That one's a pretty obvious one. I'm going to have to go with, with Ahsoka, being that I like the end of Clone Wars so much. She's definitely one of my favorite characters. She's and, pretty badass. Uh, I didn't think I'd like Ahsoka like when they first introduced her in the Clone Wars. Um, yeah. Just because she had a lot of... She had a lot of like Anakin and Luke qualities of being like super disobedient or like super sassy. Hyper aggressive. Yeah. I'm I'm glad you said that, Dave. I was actually thinking that too, that they've all had those phases where they were either aggressive, disobedient, clumsy, mm -hmm. and they all grew mm -hmm. and developed to become respectable Jedi. So well, Ahsoka didn't become a Jedi, but Yeah, I think officially. one of my favorite arcs of Ahsoka is probably the trial that she had to go through right before she left her position. <laughs> Didn't want to spoil anything for anyone, but yeah, Spoiler check out check out Clone Wars. I think it's Just like one Clone of the Wars. most like best uh, series and portrayals of the Star Wars universe. So, is Ahsoka your favorite character too, Dave? No, actually, uh. mine's is Yoda. <laughs> um, <laughs> not surprised. I have my Yoda backpack on right now for those who do not see. Um, but yeah, he's like one of my favorite characters because he's so like level-headed, gives the best advice, best lessons. 
super cute. Like when they first introduce him trolling Luke and like just scrounging around like all his stuff and not revealing that he was actually like the Jedi Master. Who would have thought that this like kooky old little monster would yeah. be a Jedi Master? Empire stuff. Strikes Back. See that that was great. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, yeah. Other than that, I would say like um, another reason why Yoda is one of my favorites is because I'm a big Jim Henson fan and a fan of Frank Oz. Um, for those who don't know. Frank Oz is the original actor of Animal and the Muppets and Cookie Monster, Fozzie Bear. He is puppeteered by Frank Oz. Jim Henson actually did a lot of the puppeteering for the first three Star Wars films. Three movies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, and he wasn't available, so he had um, he recommended Frank Oz to do Yoda. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it's my favorite character. Um, I was thinking back when I was younger. I think my, my favorite, and I guess it still is, is uh, Chewbacca. Who can do you the know, best Chewbacca call? I, I can't. Yeah, I'm not even going to try, but there you go. Uh, yeah, Chewbacca was my favorite as a kid, um, just because he was an intimidating creature, um, and he kicked ass, and he was nice to his friends. He was loyal, and he was just there for his friends, for Han. Um, and that's what kind of stuck to me uh, about Chewie. I think, uh, Jay, you were with me when um, the Fanatics had that day out. Um, at Disneyland, and we took a picture with Chewbacca. Oh, really? Uh, just like, I like went up to Chewbacca and just hugged him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm surprised nobody's gonna name this guy yet, so I'm gonna take him. He's kind of vanilla pick, but Obi Wan, specifically <laughs> prequel Obi Wan, because <laughs> that dude he basically just held it down. That dude flew around all over the place and chased after Anakin. He took on Anakin, which is already kind of a pain yeah you were my brother Anakin <laughs> yeah. yeah and I mean like he was cool because he he was that dude that didn't really want to do anything but was good at everything <laughs> you know he's like oh yeah I don't really like fighting but oh I could fight Darth Maul ain't no thing like yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. that scene in in Rebels oh epic. okay he's, well yeah he he beat Anakin he beat Maul what more can you, you know? And I mean, on. and at the end of the day, he was like, I didn't even want to do that stuff. Yeah, but against Vader, he was like, yeah, you, you can get me. <laughs> yeah, they don't think. Yeah, all we want is, all we want is that dude. He's like, a, he, you see him in the corner, you don't really think much of him. But then he comes out and you're just like, oh, sorry. For me, Ewan McGregor was definitely my favorite part of the first original prequel. Oh, For yeah. Sure. He had that sass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was the only one that can act out of that whole cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Sounds fired. That's, that's very you true. Hate it, <laughs> oh, Jar Jar. I'm just kidding. <laughs> My favorite character is Jar Jar, and I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> God. Just, Dust, hey, Jar Jar. I mean, to each their own, Juan. Uh, to each their own. Is actually Lando. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. hey, Cold 45 himself. And then I just love uh, Childish Gambino or Donald Glover's portrayal of him. Yeah. He was the only good thing about Solo was <laughs> Lando. <laughs> yeah, he did great. That was that was a good depiction. Cool. And then just knowing that he was the original pilot of the Millennium Falcon. Come on, man. That's the true OG right there. Original, now returned. Yep. Yeah. I love seeing like his uh, Donald Glover's uh, little relationship with, um, I forget the name of the droid, T9 or something like that. But yeah, it was pretty, one of my highlights of the Solo movie too. I think the Solo movie actually gets a lot of flack, but it wasn't that bad. Yeah, I didn't think it was too bad either. I mean, it wasn't yeah. great, but it wasn't that bad. To be honest, I don't, I don't think there was ever a, a Star Wars movie or show or, or anything that I either watched or read that I didn't enjoy. So even though a lot of that stuff got some bad flack, I guess, I, I still enjoyed them while watching them in theaters, anything Star Wars or reading anything. Yeah, I have to agree too. It's just like, it's, it's a ride. Like, I've always enjoyed just the different things and the action and rides. Has anyone rode the new Star Wars ride at Disneyland before it shut down? Yes. Yes, I have. And I uh, will say it's the best ride in Disneyland right now. Like, nice. like <laughs> by a mile? Before Indy was my favorite ride, I would say this is 10 times better than Indy. Whoa. Same. What? Bold. Wow. Bold That's statements. It, 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 it's a crazy ride. I believe it. it. It feels almost like three different rides in one. I don't want to spoil it's what happened. It's really immersive. 
Yeah, I don't want to spoil what happens in it. it. It's pretty dope. I mean, the consensus is that it's that good, you know. So if if everyone is saying it, then it has to be good. There's a reason why people get there early to line up in the boarding pass. That's that's another thing that's pretty cool. If you ever have done it, when you're trying to get your boarding pass, people are like trying to get it on their phone right away, and it's cool just seeing the people who do get it like scream and celebrate. <laughs> High five! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Actually, when you're on Main Street, you hear everyone cheering. Yeah. I, I don't know if there was anyone that's already inside that, that didn't get a pass. Uh, maybe yeah. that's the case for sometimes, but for the most part, everyone's cheering and high-fiving everyone. It's pretty fun. You will see that one or two guys like just in the corner looking all sad. And like, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I would feel so bad for them. So we're talking about favorite movies, talking about favorite characters. We all met through the collecting community. What are some of your favorite Star Wars collectibles? Mine's pretty easy. Specifically... Oh, and not not specifically first, but the whole line, the the Bandai movie realization line, that feudal Japan era stuff, Ooh. that is for sure my whole favorite line. Ooh. Like the the style and everything, how everything gets portrayed, but specifically the Archer Stormtrooper is probably my favorite one. That's hands down easy pick. That's a good choice. Me. Yeah. Mine's pretty simple. I'd have to say it's um I actually have two, if that's okay. My Yoda Freddy that I got from, well, I didn't get from Fun Days. I got after Fun Days. And my C-3PO Freddy, gifted by uh, one of our very own, Jay. Those Hold two on. would have to be my favorite Star Wars collectibles that I own. My favorite Star Wars collectible. Um, I mean, I have a few. I have like a whole wall of 3.75 inch Hasbro figures of just Jedis and Sith that I've been collecting for like a really long time. But mine's is actually on my back right now. He he goes with me to cons. He's my little con buddy, but it's my Yoda backpack. I picked this up um, 2007 because I had a project for school. And me and my friends just went to Disneyland on a whim, like a 24-hour trip, basically, just to do for me to do some research and take some pictures. And then I saw this backpack, and I, I was just like, I have to get it. Yeah, I've been to a few cons with Dave, and then every time we get lost, we go, I just look for Yoda, look for Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i've seen dave at a convention without the yoda backpack without that is part of your right, signia yeah. right there <laughs> the beauty of dave and yoda at a con is it, it's like legit yoda because like oh man i'm kind of thirsty all of a sudden a water bottle comes out of yoda's backpack and <laughs> like he knows and that's the thing that's a really small backpack but he, dave gets a lot of things in there it's the ah. it's the clown car of backpacks yeah, <laughs> the clown yeah car that's backpack. exactly what it is i like that right. nice uh, so if you want any uh stuff <laughs> by the way check out uh beehive collectibles.com right or beehive midtown on instagram right <laughs> but but um i'm gonna date myself again my favorite in my all my entire star wars collection is from 96 97 it's um it's that's cool Canada. i was alive then so you're not the were, you, were you guys were you guys alive in 96 I was, alive. <laughs> yeah. I was around <laughs> for <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was nine I was already a young adult, so <laughs> I used to work. Uh, I used to work at Toys R Us, and uh, Toy- Star Wars was pretty big back in the late '90s with the with the prequels, and then all the uh, retro uh, figures they've been bringing out. But the 12 inch collector series, I'm going to show it on our little Zoom here. But it's a 12 inch Chewbacca figure. But what makes this cool is this dude is furry as hell. <laughs> oh, he actually has fur. He yeah. really is furry. It's super cute. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's and and I've had it since you know when it came out in '96. I remember buying this at work. I think it was like twenty bucks back then. Um, but it just it was back then. It was so different. Like I never seen anything like it. It's like a big ass Chewbacca figure that has fur. Like it's furry, <laughs> and it was a collectible, and it was it was a hot commodity back then. Um, but it's it's one that. I still treasure because it just, it reminds me of, you know, working at Toys R Us and seeing all the excitement from the whole Star Wars line and just, you know, this whole Star Wars phenomenon is, is, it just brings me back. So yeah, that is my favorite collectible in my collection. I remember around that time too, they were doing the midnight, was it midnight Mm -hmm. releases or something? What's crazier, the uh, people lining up for old OG Star Wars toys or people who line up for like Funko Pops? Uh... (laughs) You know, I think it's it's all in the same, I think. <laughs> and I noticed when you showed us your uh, Chewbacca figure, it was still in its original packaging. Have still you ever- in its original oh. packaging. I've never taken this out of the box. Oh, never? <laughs> never. Oh, the freshest of fur. 
it's in really good condition too. Oh, fresh oh, for... What is that? Like almost 25 years? Holy. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm mostly an inbox collector anyway, so. Well, for me, my favorite collectible, I actually don't own, um, but I was helping one of my friends a few years back uh, build it, and that was the Lego Millennium Falcon, the original one before the new one came out. It was huge. That's what she said. Um, putting it, to, it was so huge that uh, he couldn't put it together himself that there was, I think, a group of five of us working on it. <laughs> I remember we were in the middle of a party, and then, like, we all just left the party to go build this Millennium Falcon. I remember when we finished, I was like, man, I want to take this home, but I don't have any room for it. <laughs> but one day when I get a bigger spot, I will definitely buy one for myself. That and maybe a Lego Death Star just because. That's a party. That's not bad considering That's how big a kind of party that I, I, know, right? I want. Um, so I know you guys were alluding to it earlier. We recently watched the last episode of Clone Wars. Season seven? Yes. Episode seven. Two. Without giving any spoilers, what's your guys' initial thoughts on it? Man, I had to watch that thing twice. I think within 12 hours, I watched the four episodes twice. <laughs> it was so good. Clone Wars was already up there for me. Ahsoka was already up there for me. And this kind of just really tied it all together. Uh, I think one of the main producers and directors, uh, I watched a video right after I watched the four episodes. I watched a video where he was talking about he really wanted to do it justice. And I think he hit that marker and it was amazing. You guys should watch it if you haven't already. I really like the fact that you get to see kind of a behind the scenes look on uh, what happened uh, during parts of episode three or like a different view on uh, how other people reacted to something that happened in episode three. Um, I don't want to say exactly what, but it's just pretty cool to see uh, how big the Star Wars uh, universe is. I will say that a lot of the questions that I think folks had after watching Clone Wars, a lot of the big ones were answered. Not all of them. There's still some questions, and there's actually some new questions that I have. But there were some questions that were answered also. I think for um, Mandalorian fans, you got a little history lesson on what the Siege of Mandalore was, too. What, another thing that I really liked about um, these last few episodes is that they really stuck true to the title of the series, which is Clone Wars. The whole series kind of humanizes the clones and it's all about the clones themselves. And they don't just kind of throw it away in the end and just like kill them off or anything like that. But they actually make you feel for them. And the way Ahsoka reacts towards them makes you really feel like, you know, they were important uh, parts of the actual series itself. Yeah, I think um, also just uh, within those last few episodes too, just seeing like how the Jedi Council, or even in like episode three, Luke Skywalker in the last three movies talks about how the Jedi back then had a hubris and everything. They kind of put themselves above like a lot of things and just like how they're portrayed in, in, in the Clone Wars, you kind of see that they're heroes and everything, but then you really think about it, it's like they're supposed to be keepers of peace, but they're all like for this war. Mm -hmm. They're always fighting. That actually was one of my favorite quotes from the last, uh, I think it was not this last episode, but the episode last week was when Ahsoka and Rex were talking and Ahsoka says, um, you know, I've been a, a Jedi. It's okay. This is a quote. It's not going to give away too much of it. Um, <laughs> Ahsoka was saying, you know, I've been, I, I became a Jedi to like bring peace, but I feel like I've been a soldier. Um, and right. then Rex says like, you know, well, I'm a clone. I was the only reason I even, you know, came to be is because of the war. Um, so they say like, well, at least one thing good came out of the war and that was the clones themselves, which is pretty cool. Um, there was one scene, cause you know how I watched, um, all the movies this weekend and I watched the last few episodes kind of all together of Clone Wars. Uh, there was one scene when Ahsoka walks in to the meeting with some of the other Jedis. Yeah. Um, and then like the things that they were talking about in that meeting, I was like, wait, this all sounds familiar. Yep. And, that's when and then talking, I watched yeah. episode three, uh, Revenge of the Sith, right after. And then you see the same scene going on. But right then, before, yeah, right before Mace Windu, right? <laughs> yeah, but then Anakin is actually leaving that meeting. And I guess at the time when um, Ahsoka walks into that meeting, they just miss each other. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> they wrote that very well. That whole yeah. section, yeah. The, the parallel of the last four episodes of Clone Wars parallel mm -hmm. to episode three it, it was just so well put together yeah and you if, you're, if Ahsoka told the jedi council what she knew 
Yep. Right. Mm. I wonder how things would have been. Man. And she wasn't planning to tell him, but I guess I, I mean, feel like she would have, but then well, it was one include, of if they included her, right? Yeah, but they're like, you're just a citizen. Well, because <laughs> because because Ahsoka said she was, right? Yeah. She was like, I'm no Jedi. Right. And that's when if you watched episode three, um, with what Dave was talking about, the the meeting between, you know, Yoda and and um and Kiaru Mundu and, and uh, Mace Windu before well they're talking about the Emperor, right? Yeah. And that, that scene was right after um Ahsoka was in that scene, right? When Mace said, Well, this is Jedi business, <laughs> you're gonna have to go, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it, it it was done very very well. So again, the hubris, <laughs> right? There you go. We all know what happens to Mace. Two hours later. <laughs> unlimited power. <laughs> awesome. Uh, uh, that in mind, you know, we all really like Clone Wars, uh, but I'm pretty sure there are a few things within just the series, Star Wars series as a whole, that uh, maybe that we would want to change. What are some of the things that? within the canon storyline that you would want to change or see differently? My, my only, I guess the thing that comes to mind is just, I, I didn't like the fact that they made uh, Ray a Palpatine. That's my only, well, maybe not my only one, but with, you know, with all the rumors when it first came out or when they were talking about like, who's Ray, you know, is, is she a Skywalker? Is she Luke's kid or, or if, is she the twin or because in the comics before the, the last three were announced, Han and Leia had uh, twins, right? Um, Jason and Jason Jaina. and Jaina. Yeah. And people were thinking it was going to be when they announced this one. Oh, you know, Ben or Kylo is Jason, and where's where's Jaina? Um, so people thought. Some people thought that. Oh, maybe it's Ray, right? Or, you know, Luke Skywalker had a kid. Maybe that's that's his kid. I just thought it would have been. I think this is, of course, my opinion. Uh, I, I think it would have been a better storyline. <laughs> now, get this too. I don't know if you guys saw this, but I think, and I don't know who confirmed it, but someone was saying that that was actually a clone of Palpatine. Yes, I, I heard that too. Right? Yeah. That, that's, that's not cool. even Palpatine. That's supposed to be a clone of yeah. Palpatine mm-hmm. who has a granddaughter, Ray. Yeah. Yeah, they oh, they put I didn't that out in that. the uh, novelization. Yeah. Um, so basically, like the even like during Return of the Jedi or during that whole time, the Emperor was experimenting with cloning himself. And as he fell down that chute in the uh, Death Star, he transferred his consciousness to a clone body. Oh, um, and ever worse. since then, they've been trying to perfect like a clone of him. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> yeah. And Ray's dad is actually a clone of Palpatine that kind of just went off on his own. Oh, yikes. <laughs> All right. I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't, don't get us wrong. I, I think both for Av and I too, I, I still enjoyed it. Like watching yes, it, yeah, it was yeah. still, it's still amazing. Yeah. But, but yeah, if you really dive in and start thinking about those potholes and stuff, I feel like it could just go on forever. Oh yeah, for sure. Still a fun movie. Still had fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna go next. I'm gonna go to the opposite end of the timeline. I'm gonna go over <laughs> to the prequels. If I could change anything, I mean, I'm not gonna change much, but I just wish that you know when we first got introduced to Anakin that he was a little bit older. I mean, dude was a baby when he brought him in, <laughs> and if he was just like you know a little bit older, maybe would have been not as weird for some of the moments in that movie. You know. Padme. Oh, yeah. Padme and Anakin. Kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, maybe a little less pod racing, a little more introducing with Obi-Wan and Anakin kind of building some rapport early. I mean, I know uh, the shows kind of do it and stuff, but I'm, I'm going off to just strictly movies. I have uh, just one thing that I wish I got to see was um, Carrie Fisher, rest in peace. Um, I kind of wish we got more from her character in the last movie. Um, I know, granted, that scene with Ben and Han at the end was, like, perfect in my eyes, but I kind of wish, like, Leia had some closure with Ben or some last words with him. Not something that I would change, but something I would add. I don't know if any of you guys have read any of the Vader comics. I know Dave has, but I don't know if anyone else has read the Vader comics. Um, One thing I would like to see, and I don't know if it's better as a comic or in a live adaptation but i would kind of like to see that in a movie or a show to see vader's journey right after he switches from anakin to darth vader yeah Um, i would really like to see that on on the big screen or 
or even on one of these Disney Plus shows, yeah, uh, I think it would be pretty epic because there's a lot that goes on and they explain a lot of um, a little bit more of Darth Vader's backstory other than Anakin and the earlier days of him being Darth Vader. Yeah, and uh, him still like going through that struggle. Yes, the battle. Light and dark. Them. Yes. Yeah. It's really good. So, I mean, those comics are out there. If you guys want to look into it, I, I highly recommend it. They're really good. But I would like to see an on-screen adaptation of that eventually. Another thing that I think would have been cool if they added into the series, um, this was, I think, in a comic or one of the novels beforehand, but um, it's no longer canon, is uh, Luke Skywalker's hand that got cut off. When they found it, they were actually using it to like gain powers from it or something like that. So it would have been cool to see what they do with it. <laughs> Walker's cut off hand in the later episodes. Wear it like a, a lucky rabbit's foot. It's <laughs> a lot of hand cutting in Star Wars. I feel like some of them like a, a bracelet of cut hands. <laughs> Wonder Woman would do really well in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> cool. Uh, we're getting towards the end of our podcast, but before we go, um, we do want to do one last segment. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go around as a group and uh, just for fun, uh, we're going to go around and say which character from Star Wars each person on this podcast reminds us of. I think Jorge. Has <laughs> I'm really excited to do this. Jorge's got the okay. master list. So let's see if uh, if you guys all vote with me um, or agree with me on this. So for my first one, I think I'm going to go with Juan. Okay. And, and my casting for Juan, Saw Guerrera. Who? Oh, Saw Gerrera. Forrest Whitaker. Okay. Forrest, Forrest Whitaker. Whitaker. <laughs> For those of you that don't know what Juan looks like, Google a picture of Forrest Whitaker and you have your answer. <laughs> I'm just he, has, Juan. he has he has straight eyes though. His eyes are his, his eyes are normal. <laughs> yeah. Juan's eyes are normal. <laughs> no, Juan's are totally normal. Juan's, I'm just joking. It's an ongoing. <laughs> It's an ongoing joke we've had for a long time now. Uh, everyone's going to call me Forrest Whitaker now for now. <laughs> Thanks, Forrest. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, who else do I have? Okay. for You know what's funny? And I, I promise you this is not rigged. Rigged. Shout out to the fun cast. This is not rigged. I, uh, I actually had Av as Chewie. Oh, okay. oh, I <laughs> swear to you. I swear to you I had Av as Chewie. I promise you this is not rigged. I was thinking about this earlier. I was Very like, who cool. do I have Av as? Initially, it was going to be Mando. And I was like, you know what? I think I see Ev as Chewie. And yeah. lo and behold, that's actually your favorite character. So that My worked favorite out. favorite character, yeah. I yeah. see Ev as Yoda just because he's super wise. Oh. Mm. Eh. I, I thought you were going to pull the old card again. I'm like, man. <laughs> <laughs> because he's old. Ev <laughs> 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 looks a lot younger than he, he actually is, too. So. No, yeah, totally. Oh, Maybe man. Yoda's 50 years old, but he's a baby. Av <laughs> looks like he's 21. Easy. Oh, man. Av has definitely found the fountain of youth. These are these Asian genes. Come on, guys. <laughs> I can see whoa, the Chewy, though. I like the Chewy. Well, why, why do you like why the Chewy? chewy or? Why, oh, why, why do you say Chewy? I think it's just, I feel like if we were to be in Star Wars movies, I feel like that is the role that you would take. <laughs> I feel like you would be a good, supportive friend to have along, along the journey. Someone you trust to make a good shot. Um, and then Jay... <laughs> Well, I don't know. Do you guys want to go as a group? Should we should we decide if we agree with any of these? No, besides keep, Wands. Just keep going. Okay. I have I have Jay as R2 D2. <laughs> beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop. And uh, <laughs> the reason being is because R2 D2 is um, as a droid, he has a I don't know, he just reminds me of Jay because Jay is so tech savvy. I don't know if that Dude, matches like, but R2 is like R2 is also like to help them get through a lot actually exactly too. yeah exactly and he's been there since the beginning it's interesting too Juan, that you said that you would see av as yoda because my vote for yoda was going to be for dave dave yeah unless he's luke because yoda's always on his back <laughs> oh that's a good that's a good reason <laughs> am i whiny <laughs> Juan, do you want to know who i have you truly as your character i thought it was sal guerrera <laughs> no 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 I-, I hope you like it it's it's han solo Okay, <laughs> I got you as Han because I feel like you would come up with a lot of the good. Um, you have the charisma of Han Solo. I say all the out of pocket things <laughs> in a funny way. I got one for Jorge. Okay, okay, go for it. Go for it. I see Jorge as C three PO. Beep boop boop beep boop boop. <laughs> he likes to oh not not in a bad way, but he likes to analyze everything in like oh good observation. Um, so like even with this podcast, he's like, how do you think the audio is doing? Who do you think he's gonna listen? Whoa. whoa, whoa. So, <laughs> <laughs> also, Jorge is uh, programmed for etiquette. 
Yes. Fact. Uh, <laughs> fact. <laughs> you know what's funny? And this is going to be a total joke on myself, but I think it'll it'll make it fair since I said Juan was Saw Guerrero. You know what everyone's, everyone says I look like? And, and I don't take this as a compliment, but what's his name? Kylo Ren. Adam Driver. You look like Adam, Adam Driver. Driver. <laughs> so we got Adam Driver. We got Forrest Whitaker. We got... <laughs> We got Yoda, the Baka. Baka, Yoda, and R two D two, and R two D two. Cool. Thank you for <laughs> pigeonholing all of us, uh, Jorge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just to wrap things up and uh, kind of end this podcast, what we're gonna do every week is end every podcast with a quote of the day. Today's quote of the day is brought to you by our resident Jedi Master, uh, Mister Dave Matron. Strength, mastery. Hmm. But weakness, folly, failure also. Yes, failure. Most of all, the greatest teacher failure is, look, we are what they grow beyond. Wow. That, that was, was really Did you good. just play a recording? Or? Was like Yoda was here. On the back. Feel I feel the <laughs> force. Uh, well, that was pretty deep. Great way to wrap everything up. Thank you, everyone, for listening to us. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, at Average Nerd Pod. You can find us on YouTube under The Average Nerd Podcast and find our podcast on everywhere where you can find podcasts. Till next time, see you, nerds. Bye.